All right, this is the next update on uh, redoing the bathroom, and this is building the vanity for it out of the uh, wild cherry from the backyard. But first, I started out with a sheet of three-quarter inch plywood. I grabbed it at Home Depot. It's called a AC pine plywood, and it was about $29 for the sheet, and it looked pretty good on one side, so I figured I'd try it. Um, it was fairly flat, but as you can see, it's got a seaside on it that's got knots on the back, but you know, none of them are really voids or anything, so I um, figured I'd try that for the price. And you know, here I am starting to, to break it down into the pieces for the cabinet. Now the basic cabinet structure I decided to make out of plywood, um, and then it's going to have the uh, cherry covering it from the backyard. So. You know, I started by just kind of squaring up all the pieces and uh, sizing them out to exactly the sizes that I needed. And then I had to go back and um, cut some dados and stuff. In uh, the meantime, I just want to show you this uh, miter sled here. It's a pain in the ass to adjust the little knobs. They stick and then you got to use pliers to loosen them. But got some other issues with it I'll tell you about later. But, you know, I got the um, panels cut to size, and here I am going back and starting to put dados in them to make everything be kind of interlocking and to pull it exactly square and flush and everything. And I find these little rubber-faced uh, pusher blocks are really handy for, you know, being able to push things down while you're cutting the dados and keep them flat on the table so everything, uh, you know, there's no bows or warps in the actual dado grooves themselves. And, everything pulls together nice and flat so after a couple minutes of you know cutting everything up and getting everything prepared it's time to just do a quick test fit and uh, see how everything's going to line up and go together and there you can see it's kind of all interlocking and if you notice in that first picture I showed you of it I actually have this vanity suspended eight inches off the ground so um, it makes the floor actually look larger in the uh, small room plus it gives me room to put a stool under it so you know that was the reason for that so a little more finishing up i have to uh cut cut out a opening in the top shelf here for the sink and the plumbing that comes down out of it and then there's a piece that goes across the back that kind of squares everything up and allows me to mount it to the wall that i'm going to use craig screws as a little extra precaution on it so that actually locks into a groove in that top too to make sure everything pulled flat together. And I decided to glue this carcass up as a, um, a two-stage glue up. I figured it would be easiest to glue this back strip in place and get everything clamped down first before I started the, uh, the rest of it. So you can see I'm using that little glue bottle thing and yeah, I've got one of the big ones and one of the baby glue bots and boy they are just amazing I really use them for everything now and you know love them and here it is got everything clamped together and don't ever let anybody tell you that you have too many clamps because uh, there'll come days when you need them all so the glue on that first glue up dried and uh, now it's time to go back and finish gluing everything up and there you can see all the interlocking grooves and tongues that are cut on the pieces and make sure I apply a good coat of uh, type bond 3 to everything and then it's just a matter of trying to get it all glued up fast enough before the the glue actually starts to set up and pull everything tight together but there it is you know by doing a test fitting you know it's going to go together and then it's just time to start getting out the clamps and uh, clamping everything up to uh, you know pull it tight together and square and then there are those couple Craig screws that go in the back there to help you know, reinforce that area that's really the uh, wall mounting bracket and I, use, I love using these things they just work so good in plywood so there it is I'll just give this thing an hour or two to dry and then remove the clamps and um, ready to start on the next step and there it is with the clamps all removed, the basic carcass. So now I'm going to start on the pedestal that this sits on. And same thing, it's the same plywood that I'm using just to, to build a casework to put the actual um, 
cherry on. So I'm just going to get all the parts all squared up. And with this one, I'm also using the Craig type screws to hold it together because you, you really won't see anything when it's done. And then the same thing, time to throw a little bit of glue on. And you can see I've clamped a board on the end there to be a stop just to make sure everything is aligned properly when I tighten the screws. So I just had to put the two sides on there. And then the same thing with the, uh, the back piece that goes in there. A little bit of glue and I had to clamp, just clamp some stops in place to make sure everything comes out perfectly aligned. That makes uh, assembly really easy on things like this because you can, you know, go to the next step right away. And there it is. That's how the uh, vanity is actually going to sit. So I carried it upstairs and just kind of set it all in place just to get a good look at, you know, what I had to do next and what I had to modify. And you can see, um, you know, it's starting to, to look a little bit like a vanity. And you can see how it being raised up actually uh, makes the room look much larger seeing a lot more floor there so with that you know now that I know everything is gonna gonna fit it's time to you know start modifying these pipes now if you saw the, the last section I um, when I replace a toilet I put new quarter turn water valve on it and I'm doing the same with this and I just wanted to cut these so that they're just at the right height in the cabinet so the tubes going to the fixture aren't all rolled up Plus, I um, had that one piece of flooring that I had cut before, never put in place because the, the valves were in the way there. So I was able to, with the pipes cut off, I was able to just, you know, slide that in place and give it a couple taps and lock it in place. And, you know, that's that means the flooring's all done now in the room. And uh, we really love this flooring. It's uh, really nice, stays clean. The only thing is it's a little bit echoey sounding. And then this is how that pedestal is going to just kind of go over. I'm just making sure it fits in there. So now I know everything's going to go together and it's time to just uh, slide the valves on. Now these are the uh, the same compression type valves I use because I have to actually remove them off later to put the cabinet in. So I figured I'd use them and you know, just kind of use a pipe cleaner to little wire brush to clean the pipe off and have a nice smooth surface for the compression ring to seal on and then slide the uh, nut on the ring on and then the valve in place and make sure it's seated in there and then just give it a little couple cranks to tighten it up and you know there's the new valve so now it's time to go back down to the shop and prepare some more of this uh, cherry lumber that I had brought in and uh, this is for the all the tongue and groove material that's going to go around the uh, that little pedestal on the bottom and the sides of the cabinet and stuff. So I'm just cutting the live edges off some some of the slices and then going back through and trying to get one good flat surface on the joiner here. And you can see some of these pieces have a little bit of warp or bowing, but that's what happens when you, you know, you cut and dry your own wood. Everything's not perfectly um, flat when you get done. So I got one side flat, and I'm just getting a straight edge on them now. On each one I went through and did this, just so that I could head over to the band saw and start resawing them down to the thickness that I needed. So most, most of these were thick enough to get to uh, two pieces of the tongue and groove out of, which is just a little bit over 3 eighths thick on making it. So I kind of resawed most of them in, into half. You can see that's a fairly easy job to do. And then I had a couple of bigger ones that were um, not that thick, so I only got one slice out of them plus a, you know, extra slice of cherry that's a little thinner for other work at the same time I did uh, save those pieces that I cut resawed off the, uh, the top sections to um, make into tongue and groove for uh, matching tongue and groove on the sides of the cabinet but once I got it resawed it was time to just take everything and you know plane it down to the final thickness whenever you're gonna make tongue and groove you have to make sure that you have um, everything is the you know identical thickness and it has uh, four nice square corners on it and it's all parallel and everything.
So I just, uh, you know, had a, did a couple passes through until everything came down to the uh, proper thickness here. And then over to the table saw and just start slicing it up so, you know, I have the, um, the maximum width of each board. But yet they're all basically random width on this batch that I'm making. Now you can see I just moved the fence a little bit between each cut just to try to get the maximum, you know, piece out of each that I could get. And then some of them actually had some defects in them and stuff that had to be cut out. But I just uh, set the fence and dealt with it. Just cut out anything that was uh, too bad to use. So now that, uh, you know, basically I've got all those little little strips prepared. They're all the identical thickness and, um, you know, all squared up. It's time to go over to the router table and... Put the cutter in there. I'm gonna cut the uh, the groove first, and I tell you what, I love this router table. Being able to you know change everything from the top and not having to mess with uh, you know fine adjustments and stuff like that. Um, you know, it makes it very easy. You can see to just swap out the bits. I can just run that uh, bit up through the table, and. Uh, you know, having those boards that I put all the bits on actually helps out too because it's easy to, to grab one and, um, you know, have the bits that you need right there and have a place to store them so that you put them back in the right place. And once I get it on, you can see, just hit the button. And uh, I've got an old piece of the tongue and groove that I use these cutters for. So I'm just going to go back and, you know, use the, uh, the power adjustments here to, to get that set perfect. I'm not going to use the DROs or anything because I just have to, um, you know, hit the profile right. And you can see I've got real fine adjustment there. So I can go a couple ten thousandths at a time until everything just kind of comes in perfect there. And then it's a matter of selecting the right ring to uh, to fit around it. I tell you, I put some uh, those rare earth magnets on the back of those openings for the, uh, the tool there. And they actually, you see, you can... The, rings now stick to the tool magnetically and it makes them real easy to get in and out so that was a, a good thing to do so I got the bit in place here and you know now it's kind of time to to get everything lined up uh, to the fence the same thing just uh, I had the fence back quite a bit so it does take a while it's you know I don't have it set to move too fast but this is the uh, the highest speed that will move at pretty much to get into the course adjustment and then once I get that piece lined up I can uh, switch it down to the finer movement there and just uh, move it right into place here and it's you know it's firmly locked in place once I uh, I'm done here and ready to start cutting and I will say that this little um, this little guard that goes, I really like this little guard that goes over the cutter and actually um, allows me to get some good down pressure to hold the board, you know, down nice and flat so things don't move. So these little fingerboards really are a big help. And uh, that one around the cutter is really a great safety feature too. You just can't get your fingers near the cutter. So, and if anything tries to kick back it, you know, it will stop it. So once I got them all lined up, I'm just going to kind of try a first pass here. Just, uh, you know, make sure everything looks good and ready to go. So you can, I mean, I, it's kind of hard to hear, but this actually is quite a quiet router, this Milwaukee router. And um, it's very smooth, the table, there's no vibration whatsoever. Everything really works great. and. Uh, you know, there's my first cut. Everything looks good. Looks to be set up properly, so it's time to start running the whole batch of them. And this is where I think one of my uh, future projects is going to be a nice little power feeder that I can put on here that just kind of locks in the miter slots here. And um, it be driven by the 36-volt uh, power supply that I have some, you know, extra capacity built into it. So probably next winter I'll be working on that just for, you know, jobs like this where you, you run in a whole bunch of pieces. Because it does get boring when you have to feed them all and hold them all. 
but you can see it does a good job um, on the edge cuts like this it does collect all the dust and you know, there's no mess or anything else and I'm real happy with the uh, the way it came out and some of these larger boards here are the ones that actually were cut off the uh, top to have matching features going around the corner and green patterns So I got the groove part done there and now it's time to just go back and switch over to set up for the tongue part. And there again you have to move the fence out of the way to get the insert ring out. And they come out nice with that tool, no problems. And, you know, and then it's just a matter of hitting the button to bring the router back up to the uh, change a bit position. And everything's real, you know, super easy and quick to do, which, you know, I came from a table where you had to kind of take the router out from underneath and change a bit and then go in there and just kind of try to slide it up and down and fiddle it. So this is like uh, stepping into the future for me. So now I've got the, the mating uh, cutter in place here. And one thing you want to make sure that the cutters don't aren't pushed all the way down in before you tighten them. You need to have the collet pull them down to lock them properly. And then the same thing, just uh, kind of run it down and take a test piece there and make sure that um, I get it all lined up perfect, which you know, it's really easy when you've got, you just need one hand on the button there and, uh, you know, one hand on the, uh, the piece to move it around until you get a perfect fit. And then it's just time to, to bring the fence back and get that set so it's, uh, you know, you get a good cut. Oops. The only thing is I uh, forgot to put the ring in. I <laughs> had it all lined up, so I'm just going to go back and put the ring in now. I tell you, I get to, uh, sometimes I get so confused by uh, moving around video cameras and lights and stuff like that that I forget to do things and um, I made a big oops in the end of this video I'll show you I got the ring in there and now it's just uh, time to go back and get everything lined up perfectly and I will say that woodpeckers uh, that aluminum extrusion on the fence here really is nice perfectly straight flat and uh, has worked out great same thing get the, the little finger guards into place and you know I highly recommend a guard like this uh, in front of the router bits I really uh, you know I get a much safer feeling when using it at least plus I don't have to worry about keeping my fingers right up by the cutter to hold it down so now I'm just gonna take a run a little a little um, cut I didn't bother turning on the dust collector here I'm just gonna do a shortcut to make sure that everything lines up properly and all looks good ready to go together so now it's time to uh, you know get going and run the whole batch of them and actually you can see uh, that those little out feed plastic pieces that I put to have the stock rest on really did come in handy they are great for keeping the uh, stock flat on the table and you know making it easier to handle I think so now it's just a matter of, you know just running them all through and I do get a, a nice cut with that MLCS uh, tongue and groove cutter set that I bought a while ago and it's really so easy to make this kind of uh, stock and it just costs a fortune if you go out to buy it plus you'd never find it in a wild cherry Uh, it only took a couple of minutes to, you know, run all the pieces, and, you know, this is one of the side pieces there. You can see that matches the top, and you see everything came out perfect and uh, aligns perfectly, and, you know, there's a, the pieces off the top. You can see they, uh, they're they going to do a great match going around the side. So then it's time to, to go back and just uh, give everything a good surface sanding on here to get it prepared. And I, my, my planer actually, uh, some of those little carbide inserts, uh, a couple of them there are leaving streaks through the board now pretty bad. So that's why 
you know, I'm just sanding this here with about one, I think it's 120 or 100 grit paper to, uh, to get rid of them. And then it's just time to go over and start cutting them to length. Uh, first, I'm going to do that bottom pedestal. I'm going to wrap that with these pieces. And there you can see I, I've got them starting to glue them on. And I'm just gluing one side of them and leaving the other side float in the, uh, the tongue and groove. So I just have some clamps. I ran some glue down one side. But I, um, I'll show you how I put them on in the, uh, when I do the side. So there's my little pedestal all ready to pretty much be installed and time to finish and I decided to go with the polycrylic on this uh, this whole project also I I really hate this stuff but um, it's the only thing that my wife can stand the smell of even down in my shop any of the oil based type stuff will get up in the house and just about kill her and while I'm doing that I've still playing with that little laser there just um, you're working out settings and you know doing some samples and stuff like that so I'm waiting for the poly to dry it's it's fun to you know learn how to use that a little bit too so I've been having pretty good luck with most everything but the photos and it turns out there's a problem with their firmware that should be updated shortly so you know then the photos should start coming out really good so in the meantime, I went through and I did three coats of this on everything with a good, uh, I did a um, 320 grit sanding between each coat. And then at the end, I just went back and I did a final sanding and put some wax on it. And Time to add on the slides to help guide my little footstool for my granddaughter. Well, I've had a couple, you know, grandchildren and... Every time they come over to stay over, we've had to pull out a stool for them to use the bathroom to brush your teeth and get washed up and stuff. So, and I figured I'd put a permanent one in here because actually I've raised the um, the height of this uh, vanity a couple inches over what it previously was. I I it's at 34 inches now. Um, the one in our bathroom was actually at 36, so I stayed below that some. But uh, the kids always need a boost to be able to you know keep the mess in the sink so these are just some slides um i had left over from the router cabinet that i'm using to to guide my um footstool and it's time to go up and install this now i had left that plumbing on before and decided to get that out of the way so i pulled that out plugged a hole and then did a double seal with shrink wrap just to be safe because um you don't want that smell in the house I love this shrink wrap. I use it on everything too. So now I'm able to just kind of slide that pedestal down in place. And I'm going to throw a little bit of pipe insulation in there around the pipes because when you have a well, everything in the summertime always gets condensation on it, sweat. So I figure I don't want any sweating down in here to, you know, show up later. So it takes two minutes to put the insulation on. And then after taking some measurements and finding the studs and stuff, I um, I went back and just put some, you know, large screws into the, the wall to actually position this and hold it in place. So that's, that's the pedestal. And, uh, you know, now that I've got that installed, it's time to go back down in the shop and work on finishing up the cabinet to set on it somewhat. I need a couple corner to face off the plywood I decided to go with just some cherry strips and there you can see I cut some strips and uh, dated some grooves in there to line up with the uh, edge of my tongue and groove and then the one on this side actually needed a little matching 45 degree to the, uh, the V groove on the tongue and groove paneling that's going on the side and once I got everything, you know, ready to go, it was just a matter of cutting it to the length of the uh, plywood there. Now you can see it locks on there nice and tight. And it sticks out the exact same amount as the uh, the cherry on that side. So now it's time to just glue it in. And there again, I got that uh, little baby glue bot. And I just love these things. They're just so easy to use. And, you know, I've had no problems with them or anything. 
and make sure you get a good coating when you're gluing to the edge of plywood on there and you know, everything locks in place nice and tight and a uh, couple clamps just until everything sets up once that glue is set up it's time to put some of the tongue and groove on the outside and first piece I actually cut the tongue off of it I wanted that side to the front and you see I'm just running a, um, a strip of glue on the one side of this item um, natural wood's gonna always expand and contract and the plywood's not gonna so what I'm doing is I'm just gluing the one edge of these to the cabinet as you can see right there I'm just gonna clamp it in position and then the other edge of it's really just basically floating so that it can expand and contract um, and by you know just doing so in a three or four inch area like this you won't see as much movement it'll kind of disappear into it so there I am putting the next piece in and this will you know actually hold down the the other side of that first piece and I didn't want to I was gonna use some of the little pin nails but I didn't really want to have any of that showing or anything so I just decided to you know glue them one side like this and see how that works out which I think it'll work out really good so you can see this is these are the pieces that were re off the uh, the actual top when I uh, prepared those pieces so I'm trying to get the look of the grain to go right around the edge on it which you'll see in a little while once we get it all together just a matter of um, glue on one side and then I just clamp them down for a couple minutes just to make sure that the glue had uh, you know was squeezed out flat and there were no lumps under it or anything and it's nice to have a couple of these deep throat clamps around at times too when you you know you can't you have no other way to get in there and clamp things So there it is, I got them all glued in place now and uh, the back edge that goes up against the wall I'm just putting a that mating exact same 45 degree chamfer on there just so that if it's not a perfect uh, fit to the wall you won't see it, it'll kind of disappear behind the chamfer and it'll be a shadow line and then comes the dreaded sanding task that takes a while to go back and you know sand all the v-grooves and just uh, get all the surfaces finally smoothed down and that front corner that I glued on actually needs a matching radius to the top. So, you know, it's nice having those MLCS that complete set of bits. Boy, I love that. And they really do cut good. I've had no problems with them. And it's nice having them in the tray where you just, you know, pull them out and select the ones that you want. And then it's time for a final sanding down to, I just went down to 180 on these. Because what happens when you put this polyacrylic on it actually raises the grain the first coat of it so you really have to go back and sand it good and everything on this cabinet inside out bottom top and everything wound up getting three coats in the end and there's the first coat and you know that's matter let that dry sand it and it's time to go back and finish the final sanding on this uh this top which actually this front edge to get everything really blended in and smooth it down perfectly took me quite a bit of hand sanding there but it was really worth it in the end it, it did come out perfect and um, had to use some pipe and stuff to get the radiuses in there and then it's time to go back and put the final radius on the top of it and this is when you really hope and pray you get no chip out because uh, you know this is kind of the last operation to it so you can see I actually clamp pieces on each the start and the end points of it and stuff just to you know stop any tear out. And again, this is another one of those MLCS bits and really super clean cut, uh, nice smooth cut. So for the price, I'm pretty amazed at uh, how good they they actually work for that whole set. I'm just gonna carefully go around all the edges now. And, just break the corners there just so that you know don't have any sharp edges to bang into and then it's back to I just sanded this down to the, uh, the 180 grid again just to get it ready for the final finishing and same thing the top I um, I put four coats of this polyacrylic on sanding between each coat I did it both sides um, 
I didn't know how durable it would be, but I put this stuff on our um, our butcher block uh, island top five years ago, and that thing's been, you know, had hot pots on it, hot pans, all kinds of stuff on it. It still shows no sign of wear, so I figured this really, as long as everything's sealed up good, um, should have no problems in the future. I thought about epoxy, but I just didn't want a different look on the top from the rest of it, so... I decided to go this way and, you know, just throw an extra coat on and standing good with uh, 320 grip between each coat so that you do have a good adhesion because uh, these are not a chemical bond. These are just a surface type bond when you layer coats of this stuff. There it is, a side of the cabinet in the top. Um, you know, both got some polyurethane on them now and uh, starting to get near the finished thing and, you know, sand in between coats and Actually, the whole cabinet itself wound up with uh, three coats of polyurethane on it, inside, outside, and everything else. So, and there's the last coat on the going on the top there. So now it's time to mount the uh, the slides for the drawers. Um, originally, I was thinking about making individual drawers on the on the top here, but it turned out that I. Um, they came out different width because of the way I've got everything centered. I've got the sink centered in the counter and the counter overhanging the um, the edge of the vanity a little bit. So I wound up just uh, deciding to go with two slides on the outside there, one on each side there, and the uh, nothing in the center of the drawer. So there it is, just kind of set together for the first time since uh, finishing it. And then it's time to, to start on the drawers. So I, you know, I resawed and um, ripped to width and flattened. And now I'm going back and just doing some final cut to size on the drawer parts here. And then it's a matter of, you know, starting to trim them down. And, and at this point, I was realizing that, you know, I'm not getting like perfect cuts anymore with this. Uh, this sled that I bought um, it's really been a big disappointment to me just the uh, trying to adjust all the, uh, the settings on it stuff is really hasn't worked right but now I'm, uh, I'm not getting uh, perfectly square cuts and I'll show you in a second what the problem is so there it is uh, you know I got the drawer part starting to, to be broken down now And I'm just doing uh, the simple dado corners like I do on everything. But I wanted the drawers made out of cherry so everything would, you know, look good and match. And here's one of the things. Trying to set this uh, this end stop up. It's really a big pain in the ass. So you have to loosen the two screws to get the fine adjustment on it and move it. And um, then there's a screw there you can do you know, even finer adjustment, but the tool always sticks in that screw for some reason. I don't know why. It's, it's just been a pain in the neck or something. I don't know whether it's a screw or the tool. And then when you go to tighten it, you can see you can actually wiggle that a little bit and things move. So, you know, I really uh, don't like the way this uh, whole stop setup works. And then even once I, I got the part cut, and I tried starting to uh, fit them together with a square. Nothing lined up perfect. And there's what's happening. The um, That board, that center board there, is actually starting to warp up between those screw holes. You can see it looks like it's expanding. And I've got raised sections there that actually raise the... Um, you can see it rocks over them. So for some reason, that board on the left there is uh, it's puffing up in the middle. It looks like it's just made out of cardboard or something. The two other ones are have no problem. They're still perfectly flat. They haven't expanded or anything else. So it looks like um, they must have used some really cheap material. That's uh, not really much moisture or anything in my shop. So I don't know what's happening. But um, just must have been something wrong with the material. So I have to go back through and get myself some, I guess, Baltic birch plywood and replace those panels because they're really junk. And they, they really make it so it's not, you know, accurate anymore. So anyhow, just, you know, playing with that stop and everything else. I probably would have been better off to build my own. I, I definitely would not buy this again. 
So I just, uh, you know, I, I'm going to have to do something with it soon. I just thought I'd, you know, do an update on my feelings about it because they're, um, I think it was a waste of money. So once you get everything set up and, um, you know, ready to go, you really have to, uh, try to, try to clamp it down and average, uh, that rocking on it to get a halfway decent fit on things. So, you know, here I am cutting the, uh, the dados and the lips on the ends of the, uh, the drawer parts to fit together. Yeah, you know, I just I just take the cut and I'll just double check it. And if they're a little bit cockeyed, I'll just go back and do another another cut until I you know get it close. And there you can see what I, I'm talking about. How you know you get the rock over that raised bumps between the screws there. So I actually wound up using the um, using that Incra clamp on them to try to get it down as tight as I could. You can see that little clamp to hold it on that flat section of board, but it's still far from perfect. So I I did in the end wind up you know getting all those corner joints cut there. It's funny how things like this show up when you're you know getting down to nice tight fitting joints. And there's the basic drawers. And then for the bottoms, I had bought some uh, eight th three millimeter Baltic birch plywood that I was going to use. And there you can see how none of the joints are actually cut exactly uh, perfect on this, just because of the play in the in that jig, which really stinks. So now it's time to to go back and cut the grooves for the uh, that three millimeter Baltic birch base. And this is where you really have to make sure you get things indexed right, otherwise you're in trouble and you'll be making new parts. So once you, you know, once you get set up, same thing, everything goes real quick. And those little plastic pusher blocks are really great. Now you can see I, you know, I don't have the guard on most of the time just for getting videos, but you should use the guard wherever you can. And then I just decided to get my Craig jig back out to do the rest of the cutting. And that's basically how the drawer goes. And the one drawer on the left-hand side is actually an inch wider than the one on the right-hand side. And then to, um, before I did the glue up on these, I, I wanted the drawers to look nice on the inside. And I didn't want to take a chance of any um, glue being, uh, leaving glue lines or anything like that. So I actually put a coat of polyurethane on the complete inside with it clamped together. And then decided to uh, take it apart to do the glue up. Now this really, uh, you know, was an extra step, but I think it was worth it because they're, you know, I wanted the drawers to look really nice on the inside with the cherry and everything. It's not like they're just plain plywood drawers or anything. So I got them all, all ready to glue up. And then, you know, this actually gave me a chance to go back and uh, sand off where the grain raised also on the inside. So I'll have a perfectly smooth finish. Which really was worth it. And then it's time to pick out, select, and start cutting a piece for the drawer front there. That was just another piece of cherry that I, I found that was like almost quarter sawn. And then as always, it's uh, time to go back and do the glue up. And you can see I'm still using that uh, board that I made with the wedge clamps and rubber bands and stuff like that for all my drawer glue ups. And frame glue ups and stuff it just uh, makes everything pull together so nice and flat and square and it makes it a simple job to clamp things the same thing using that little baby glue bot and getting glue in all the uh, all the grooves and faces that mate and everything goes together good and you know, those little wedge clamps that lock everything right up against that square corner and then it's time to just go back and uh, throw a couple clamps on the drawer and then just clean out any squeeze of squeeze out of the glue and you know I wind up with a you know no problem at all with the glue and guess what we had to replace this week also I'll be doing a video about that in a while 
But once I, you know, once the glue dried and this little jet belt sander, this thing is just amazing. Um, I love this tool. It's been zero problems and it works great. And it allows me to just go back and, you know, clean up big flat surfaces like this and get a perfect square finish on them in, um, you know, in seconds. So that's one tool that I'd really recommend. And then back over to the router table to just break some of the corners on the drawers and you know same thing just uh, get the uh, pick the right bit that you want and go back through and get everything all set up just touching a button which really uh, really does work nice And one thing you want to do whenever you put these rings in is make sure you blow off any sawdust so they fit down perfect and, you know, sit flush. And then it's just a matter of bringing the, uh, the router bit to the, uh, the proper height, which makes it, you can see just how easy it is. You just have to, you know, hold the button down and just uh, figure out how fast you want to move it. And the same with the fence, bring that right up to position. And um, it does lock in position perfect. Nothing moves when you're cutting or anything. So, you know, I'm real happy with the outcome here. And it's just out of breaking the, the sharp corners that I, you know, I want to broken. You can actually see how the little plastic pieces sticking off the table make it easy to, you know, hold things like this down flat. You get a nice, really good straight cut. So now they've got that all cleaned up on the outside. It's time to go back and um, make sure there's three coats of this uh, polyacrylic on everything. See, I got some old boards that I just put some finish nails up through so I can flip things over and paint both sides at the same time and you know it's a lot cheaper than buying those uh those little pointed paint stands now it's time to start cutting up some pieces for my little pull out stool and same thing you know it's same cherry uh just a matter of flattening things and uh, planting them and joining them so i didn't show that part i'm just here doing the final cut to width and and I want the two sides to have a same taper on them. So I'm just going to take some double sit tape here and just put that on and just uh, put them both together and then go over to the band so I cut my taper on them. Makes it a lot easier to know that they're both identical. And then over to that sander to, to go back and just, um, you know, sand right down to the line. I always leave a, a little bit extra on. And the sander really does give you a nice straight edge when you go back and clean it up and the tape does I did put a little extra on there I really didn't need that much but it does stick good and work good in the meantime all the the drawer polyurethane is dry so it's time to start mounting the drawers in and just uh, put some three millimeter spacers under them for the gap to hold them up and you know everything is kind of temporary till I get the front on here but I just aligned them all within the uh, the cabinet there and put the screws in place for them. So, same thing on the other side, and this one actually is an inch wider. And then it's back over to the router table again. Get that uh, loaded up with a... Um, just a straight cutter, 3 8 straight cutter. I have to cut a, uh, a stopped dado in the sides of them. So I had to take off that radius cutter. Now I'm just going to throw in a, um, there's another one of the MLCS bits. It's a uh, just a 3 8 half inch straight cutter. Got that set up. So I figured I'm going to just try to, um, to use the, uh, see how the pocket capability of this is and so first thing I did is I just set uh, the table height at zero there so that that was just flush 
with the table. And at this point, I turned on the DROs um, so I could, you know, tell how deep I was going up. Got everything all, all set up and got the ring in. And then I just had to move that over so they had a 3 8 gap between the uh, the fence here. And got that all set up. Now what I'm going to do is just try to do a, a plunge cut. So I'm going to start up the router here and then just hit the um, up button. And I'm just going to go quarter inch at a time. So, you know, basically I'm just, uh, I need about a 0.48 deep slot. Now you can see as I'm going up, those MLCS bits don't really have a good end cut on them, so you really have to hold it down. But it did come up a quarter inch, and I'm able to, uh, you know, get the slot in there. And one thing I noticed is when you're not cutting on the edge, I don't catch any of the sawdust like that. I mean, the router down underneath stays clean and everything, but, you know, basically uh, everything shoots out the end there. It can't get into the fence. So I got the first quarter of an inch and now I'm just going to position it on the tape and um, just go down and uh, bring it up to, uh, I think it was 0.48 that I wound up having to, I measured on the uh, plywood I cut. So same thing, just uh, hit the button until it comes up to the, uh, the number that I want and then it's time to just uh, finish off the groove, the second cut here. And that actually worked pretty good, but I tell you, I'm going to have to look for some uh, some bits that have a better end cutting capability than these. These are more just a, uh, you know, cut, cut into the face. So there they are, you know, both, both came out perfect and uh, worked out good. And there's a piece of plywood for the step that goes between them. So now it's time to, to do the glue up, and I just wanted this to be strong enough to be able to, you know, hold my weight. So that's why I've got everything kind of locked together there. And that just fits perfect. And while the glue is drying on these things, it's time to go over and just kind of cut the little uh, support feet blocks. So they were just two pieces that were cut off the ends of the other strips. And one of them's got a knot in it, but it really won't matter when I put it together. It's time to put some biscuits to put it together. And they were a little narrow for the uh, pins on the biscuit cutter to hold it. So what I did is I just clamped them to the fence here to... So nothing would move because you you know you want to make sure when you're trying to get a pocket centered in something that uh, you know it's really clamped good. And there you can see the pockets came out perfectly centered, even though they were narrower than the uh, pins. And then it's time to go back and just throw a couple mating biscuits in the, uh, the little stool part there. And these are going to be the little legs. Now, I'm not finishing this up now because I'm kind of waiting for some nylon glides to come to put on the base of it. But, you know, basically I just got it all clamped together. And then I got that little laser over there. I'm burning my uh, my little uh, logo and date into all my stuff now. And I had to hang it off the end of the cabinet to get that to uh, be at the correct focus height. But... You know, it's fun. It's really working out good for what I wanted it for. So there it is. I, you know, I wound up burning that into a bunch of different parts. So it does work good. And now it's time to get ready to install stuff. And when I set the sink and locate exactly where I wanted, I found out that the um, ceramic had like a little lump in the front that was getting in the way of positioning it properly. So I just took my angle grinder with a 40 grit uh, flap wheel on it, went back and cleaned it up. And it's time to put that front piece on that I made for the, uh, made to go in the front of the drawers here. So I figured I'm going to screw it on from the back with some, uh, some of the Craig screws here. So I just drilled some clearance holes and 
the same time I was trying to find handles for this for a long time and I couldn't so in the end I wound up finding um, Amazon has this warehouse section where they had the exact same uh, hooks that match all the fixtures in our bathroom that are like a flat wall mounting type hook and um, by buying them through the warehouse uh, this one set here does have a couple fingerprints and some late scratches on I have to buff out but by buying them through the warehouse I was able to get you know each of these was like a $29 unit that I got for a little bit over six dollars so I made it you know real affordable to use these as the um, matching handles for everything in there will kind of go together and this set here you can see was installed once and removed somebody probably didn't like it but the other set was never taken out of the box even though it must have just been a return to the warehouse and you know, it was all brand new so you know this is how I decided to go to to get my handles and knobs and you know everything will be matching now and at Amazon warehouse from now on I'm gonna be looking for you know stuff in that and then to mount them I uh, decided to recess them about a eighth of an inch into the um, front of the piece and there you can see I got a nice piece I was quarter sawn really you know the best piece that I had to make that drawer front out of and I did manage to screw it up in the end but anyhow here I'm just you know putting some pockets in for the uh, handles and then there's a square section on them that sticks down about another sixteenth of an inch there you can see so I drilled a little bit deeper with a uh, 5 sixteenths drill and then I got out some of these uh, I got these little corner chisels that I bought a while back and I use them for cleaning up like when you're routing a mortise get a nice square corner on it and, I, and this one here actually turned out to be the perfect size for the square on the knob so I um, was able to just square up that that second hole that I drilled and just took a chisel and just uh, pulled a little bit of the you know the mess out of there clean it out a little bit and I wound up with a perfect fit for them and they they lock right in there and I you know I never really thought this would be that handy an item but I thought it was cool so I bought it and turned out it's um you know, it does see a lot of use now and you can just switch that little handle that's got a metal pounding thing going right through it to any one of the different size chisels So, it, you know, it's just a matter of getting it positioned perfectly so that the handles come out in line. But it worked really good. And this is where things start going really south. Um, I got this all lined up and turned out I was more interested in getting the lights and the camera set. And I didn't pay attention to what I was doing. So I screwed that drawer front onto the drawers. And you can't really see it here, but... When I actually got done with it, and I took the clamps off and looked at it, I said, I just let out a scream. I couldn't believe it. I put it on backwards. You see those, uh, see that knot sticking out there and the um, holes for the handle are on the inside? So here it is. I ruined the drawer front by not paying attention, but I decided to use it for now anyway. And, uh, you know, just because I didn't want to spend four hours to go back right at this point, and I'll make a a new front when I uh, finish up the doors so now that the cabinet was basically all together and ready to go I had uh, just barely enough of that uh, laminate flooring left over to line the entire bottom of the cabinet I figured that would look real nice and I just used some construction adhesive and glued that in the front and there's my little pull out step stool so now I, the holes in the bottom of the cabinet were just big enough for the nuts to clear on the, on the valve. So I had to shut off the water and remove them. And this is just sticking the place in the cabinet in place. Not too heavy. I don't think it weighs much more than 100 pounds. So you know, it wasn't too bad to get in place. And it took a little while to, to get the exact location of the, um, the pipes because they were just like a perfect fit to go through the holes but you know, everything just set in place right there and um, that's what it's going to look like 
and it's time to go back through and just do a, um, you know, just double check all the level and uh, I just took you some of those uh, two and a half inch Craig screws to go back and make sure that it's fastened solidly to uh, studs in the wall. So I got a, a couple of screws into each stud across the back there and then the, um, the side I had to screw into the wall and put some uh, half inch shims in there because I had left it spaced out you can see on that left hand side there so everything's uh fastened down tight and um you can see there's a the little hidden step stool they really don't see and now it's time to to just finish up the top so this is only set for about a week here and it's, i'm just going back and sanding it with 320 grit um after four coats it really takes about 90 days i think for this uh polycrylic to set up so you can't really I'm gonna have to go back over it again but I sent it with 320 then 400 by hand then 600 then 800 then a thousand and then 1200 to get it the best that I could for now and um, then go back with four zero steel wool with a good couple coats of this Johnson paste wax to um, you know to bring the luster back out on it and it did come out you know it did come out nice I'm real happy with it but like I said it's a uh, polycrylic stuff you have to go back over in a couple months once it's really hardened and I just took it up set it in place and there you can see how those pieces that I had uh, sawn off the sides the grain goes right around the corner now pretty much and uh, lines up and matches and I made a trip to Home Depot got some new plumbing stuff it was only like four bucks I figured I'd replace it got the hinges for the doors which I'll be making in the next video and then I got some little chrome thing, plastic chrome things to put around the pipes. And a good good can of silicone. I think they're pretty neat, these little things. You can either slip them over half-inch copper tubing or you can just bend them and they crack apart. So you can just spread them right around. And uh, put them on the existing installation. And it's time to put the top in place. And I figured I was going to just use, I have some of this heavy-duty um, silicone glue type adhesive so i'm just going to put a couple of drops across the uh the cabinet to put the top on so i know that a um a 22 inch wide top is going to move probably at least a quarter of an inch over the seasonal movements so i i put some good heavy gobs at the back to kind of anchor it there and the um the front should just float back and forth and you know you shouldn't really see anything there's enough overhang to hide it all so Put the silicon in place, and then I'm just going to drop the top right down on there. You want to try to drop it down right the first time. And that's all I did to install it. No hardware or anything else. I figured this will be the, the best thing to do to just leave, the, um, leave it kind of float. There you can see that fit fit in there really nice so then I just had to let that dry for an hour you know just for the silicone to set up and doing the same with the sink I'm putting uh, five big gobs of the, uh, the silicone glue on there and I'm just gonna squish it down till the sinks just floating above the, um, the wood I don't really want the sink to be touching the wood because the condensation getting between it stuff could cause a problem later so um, I put some masking tape you can see for the final alignment because you only get really one shot without making a mess. Got all the plumbing in place and ready to go. And then I'm just going to set it right down on there. Locate it where I want it and not going to squish it down really hard because I want the sink to be kind of floating just a hair. So all that silicone setting up, I was able to go back, and you can see that the water feed lines to the sink are the perfect length now that I've cut off that extra tubing in there, and those everything's cleaned up pretty good down under there now. It's time for the drain and move all that stuff, and this is where you want to work fast because uh, some terrible smells come out of that little pipe. So you want everything to be ready to go, and you know have the sink drain closed so nothing can get up there 
And then all this stuff just hand tightens down. And everything looks pretty much nice and clean down under there now. So that, you know, there's a little bit of extra pipe to clean it up good. This plastic piping is just so easy to work with. And it does seal up good just by hand. Time to check for leaks. So I turned everything on and filled up the sink half of the way there just to, you know, get a good flow down through there. And then just let it drain. And luckily, um, no leaks anywhere. So we're good to go. Everything's still nice and dry. And a couple hours later, I went back and um, I opened that new tube of silicone. I just put a real little tiny cut on the end and had to use a brazing rod to poke a hole in the thing there. So now it's time to go back through and uh, silicone that gap around the sink and try to do a, a real neat job with it. I just went slow and, you know, got, got made sure there was a nice bead there. and Did make a little bit of a mess on the side there. Had some sticking out, but when the guys install my granite top, they said if you take a damp paper towel with a little bit of um, alcohol on it, that it cleans up the silicone good. And actually it did. Um, it worked great for me, but the only thing is it removed the wax from the top. It didn't affect the finish. So I just had to go back and put more wax on it in the areas where I touched it. And there it is all, uh, everything's all sealed in and ready to go. And, um, you know, I'm, this is about where I'm going to stop this video now because it's just really too long. It, it started out as over three hours of uh, footage, and, you know, I did get it down to a little over an hour, but still feel it's too long. You can see the drawer pulls out nice, but needs a new front. I think those uh, knobs look really nice on there, and there's my little step stool that I'm waiting for the uh, nylon glide to go in the bottom. That's why there's plywood under there. And that's going to be coated with the flooring also when it's done. So in the end, I'm really happy that I decided to go with this kind of floating 8 inches off the ground there because it does make the room look so much bigger by having that extra floor visible as you walk in. Um, it used to look so small when the vanity went down to the ground. So glad I changed my mind and went this way. And, you know, as I said, I'll be doing a, the follow-up one will be, uh, you know, doing the drawers for this and um, starting some of the moldings. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.